So in this video, we're going to look at how to take a perfectly good magnet like this one and demagnetize it, either intentionally or unintentionally, as happens all too often with toy magnets like this one. And the first way to demagnetize it is to just give it a few sharp taps. And if you're not careful, as just happened here, the taps are sharp enough and the rather brittle ferrite material starts to break off. Well, why does hitting it remove the magnetic field or at least reduce it? Well, as we saw in the previous video, material like this is made up of a whole bunch of tiny regions, maybe the size of a grain of sand, called domains. And when it's magnetized, the field in each of those domains points in close to the same direction. Well, if we hit it, we give a little bit of extra energy to the system and that allows some of the edges of those domains to move and the fields of the domains to point in more randomly directions, at least on average, and that reduces the field. So you can often have it when you have a nice magnet like this at home and you drop it, it suddenly isn't much of a magnet anymore. One of the ways to prevent that sort of thing from happening is to use a keeper. In this case, this wrench. By putting the magnet on the wrench, we're actually creating a magnetic circuit that actually makes it easier for the magnetic flux to flow from one end of the magnet to the other. And in turn, that makes it a little bit harder for the magnet to get demagnetized. And in a lot of cases, particularly if you have a horseshoe magnet, you are given a keeper with the magnet. But because it is damaging to the magnet, this is really not a good way to demagnetize something. A way better way is to use a AC, an alternating magnetic field, that gradually diminishes in value. And a few years ago, meaning 20 or 30 years ago, you could buy these things. This one apparently came from Radio Shack. It is a bulk demagnetizer. All it is is a coil like this inside a nice plastic housing and attached to the AC power. And we're going to have a go at that right now. So it's all plugged in. What I'm going to do is turn on my demagnetizer put my magnet on it and move it around and then move it away very slowly like this. There you can probably hear the field because it's AC and I'm just going to move it around like that and maybe I'll slowly turn it over as well and do that. And now I will slowly move it away and maybe we'll repeat this a few times. And at this point, it should be a lot less magnetic. So let's see if it is less magnetic. Yeah, look at that. It hardly picks up any of our screws. Now, why was this device invented? Well, it was because people use these things. This is an old reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape, and sometimes when a radio station or home user wanted to make sure the tape was completely blank, they would use one of these demagnetizers to demagnetize the contents of the tape. Why does a diminishing AC field reduce magnetism in a permanent magnet? Well, we have to look at the BH curve that we've looked at before. And very briefly, what the curve shows is the amount of magnetic field strength you get when you apply a certain current to a coil around a piece of magnetic material. So as you increase current, you move up the curve over here. And for a strongly magnetic material that is a good permanent magnet, when you remove the current, 
you start moving along not on the same path but on a different pass and when you get to zero current you end up at this point where there's no current through the coil but you still have a very nice strong magnetic field and that makes a good permanent magnet well if you now apply current in the other direction in the other part of the AC cycle you start moving down the curve over here and you end up with a magnet in the opposite direction and if you just had a nice strong AC cycle you would simply move up and down this curve like that but if the next AC cycle isn't quite as strong you might only get up to say somewhere around here and then the next part of the curve where it's even less you might only get to this point at diminished magnetic strength and then move down here to this point and then move over here to this point and so forth and gradually move your way down right into the middle of zero magnetic field at all and that's how a demagnetizer of the type we looked at typically works now if you have an old CRT color TV like this one you may actually have a demagnetizer in fact almost guaranteed you will and if we turn it on you can hear it did you hear that hum well that hum was a coil around the edge of the CRT having an AC current applied and then it was gradually diminished to nothing to make sure the CRT was not magnetized because the CRT depends on magnetic fields to very carefully align the red, green, and blue electron guns to match up with the red, green, and blue phosphor dots or stripes on the screen. And if it doesn't, well, you get funny colors. Let's see if we can see them. Let's see if we get something else that we can look at here. Okay, the setup screen gives us at least some blue that we can look at. Now, if you were an old-time TV repairman, you might have bought one of these, which is a CRT demagnetizer coil. And let's see how we can take it apart. Here we go. This is real vintage. And um, we'll see if it works. That's our coil. You can see we can move it around in front of the TV, but most interestingly will be if we plug it in and, well, see what happens. Okay, it's plugged in and I'm going to turn on the power. Oh, look at that. See the different shades of colors on the screen? And if I move it away and do so very carefully, I'm left with a nice clean screen. If I stop it midstream, you can see there's now a red area. Some of the magnetism is probably retained in the stripe mask right behind the front of the CRT. And we need to demagnetize it again by strongly magnetizing everything and then gradually removing the field, making it less and less strong the further away we go and now I'm completely out of the screen and we have a nice good blue again. There is one other common thing that you can use to generate a field to demagnetize things and that is a soldering gun because it essentially has a great big coil in here and current flowing in a loop here and there are lots of stray magnetic fields and let's see if we can see it on the TV. There's some of the reds. So it's not nearly as strong as our purpose-built CRT demagnetizer, but we can essentially achieve the same thing just by gradually moving it away from the screen. Now the one thing I should point out is it's not a good idea to be playing around with something like this if you aren't sure you know how to properly demagnetize the screen because you might end up with a CRT with a color blotch on it and 
that's not very nice if you really want to still use the CRT. There's one other way that I can think of of demagnetizing things besides using magnetic fields as produced by this coil and that is by overheating the magnet and if you look on any number of online sources you can see each magnet type typically has a well-defined and well-known Curie temperature. If you heat it above that temperature it ceases to become a magnet or it ceases to be a magnet and if you cool it down it will have lost all its magnetism that it previously had and not usually a problem because it's usually many hundred of degrees Celsius but it is something worth knowing about. So there you have it. That is everything I wanted to tell you about demagnetizing magnets. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.